Hello and welcome to the second episode of Your Questions Answered. If you're new to this, so am I, this is only episode two. It's a new monthly sort of Q&A that I'm doing and this is the second episode. So this is your chance to ask me any questions about my photography or YouTube, social media, anything you like or ask me questions about your own practice. So this could be, does my social media reflect me as a photographer? Send me mock-ups of zines, anything. You can attach photos, videos, audio, whatever it is to help you articulate your question and you just email it over to madsonbequestions at gmail.com. And just a huge thank you again to everyone who sent in messages, whether it was through the email or the Instagram Q&A thing I learned how to do a few weeks ago. Um, I done that a few weeks ago and I've still got quite a few left over so I'll do some Instagram questions alongside some email questions that I got. So once again huge thank you and the point of this is I don't want to be the only one answering the questions I want you guys to help me out because you have much more perspectives than I do you know 10 brains are better than one, 100 brains are better than one and you've all got different experiences within photography and I know you guys really help each other out. So down below in the comments you can either write a generic generic <laughs> general question or you can refer to a specific question so I've gonna put numbers up by each question so you can use the numbers to refer to a specific question now I think that's all the admin out of the way let's get going first question and this question was actually left on a YouTube video I did and it's would you like to share how you got into film photography now this one was a bit it's a bit embarrassing basically when I was 16 going to college you have to select what you wanted to do and you use a little tick box next to all the subjects. And I absolutely adored science. I wanted to be a sports scientist. So I picked all the science subjects, including physics. I thought I picked physics. <laughs> Don't know where my head was. I actually ticked photography. So I got my timetable and I went to the admin people and I said, I made a mistake. And they said, that's fine. Go to the first lesson so you're not marked as absent and then come back and we'll sort it out for you. So I thought, all right, I'll go to the first lesson, first lesson, roll a film, film camera. I've never seen either before, an hour to go out and explore and shoot. And for me, that was really weird. You know, you're in a controlled classroom environment and they're saying, go out and explore. I never had that before. So I went out and shot, came back and we spent two hours in the dark room. And that was it for me. Right, next question is from Phil now. I'm probably pronouncing that terribly, I don't know. It's from Phil, um, who's super lovely and a great supporter of this channel. And he actually had a question in the last video, um, which I'll link down below, all about the percentage of bangers to, bangers, that's really good, to okay images for a scene. So what percentage should you have of amazing shots you love to okay shots, which kind of move the story along in a scene? Um, and he linked his Instagram, which I'll link up here. So let's have a look at his Instagram. So on his highlights, which you can check out, he's put it up here. So I have 19 toy photos I don't hate. Should I make a zine now or wait till I have more that I like? So at the moment, let's see what his followers said. 48% said just print and 52% bangers only. Okay, so pretty much a 50-50 split. <laughs> um, Let's have a look. Personally, I don't think you have to have loads of amazing images. I would go for maybe 70, 80. You need those images which just give you a bit of a pause, a bit of a break, especially if it's between two really powerful images. Um, and as long as it's providing some sort of substance to the story, I don't think you have to have these amazing images all the way through a scene. Cool, yeah, I really like this, the reflection. What I really love about what Phil's doing here is he's interacting with his followers a lot from all the stuff, you know, landscape portraits, what do you think about the images? Because at the end of the day, these are the people who are going to be supporting you and either buying the scene or sharing it if they can't afford it. So it's really important to keep that engagement up. And actually, this is really cool seeing behind the scenes. And I love that last shot, actually. That one's brilliant. Yeah, these last two are really good. So overall, I think, Phil, you've made the right decision to everyone go out and give them your perspective on this. But overall, I think you've got it down to some really good images. And also, I just love the fact you're in Japan because I love Japan. <laughs> um, 
yeah overall really solid and if you do start sending to the uk let me know right next question is from antonio in italy which is really awesome so he is asking who is your favorite writer artist film director photography and what is the idea concept behind your work right okay <laughs> so my favorite artist is I, i'm gonna pronounce this terribly marinelle i found him on instagram and he does digital drawings he is amazing and a lot of his color palettes are inspired by japan a place i love and he's just incredibly talented so i'll put his instagram up here he's really good my favorite writer now for the last two years i haven't actually read any fiction books it's been all non-fiction just because it's kind of been in the mood i've been in and a lot of them are travel memoirs so the best book i've read recently was how not to travel the world by lauren Juliff. um it's just really funny very relatable for me about a woman traveling the world solo so that was definitely my favorite favorite what else are you asking film director i think it's got to be ava i mean she's on series amazing when they see us film amazing selma she's just i mean 13th documentary so that's yeah fiction film documentary and a series all where uh, she just smashed it so ava i think she's brilliant photographer during lockdown i've come across laura panic and i don't know how i've never seen her work before she's been making stunning portraits for years She's absolutely brilliant. And most of them, I think they're medium format images, just really strong. So Laura Panic right now is my favorite photographer. And what is the idea behind your work? My idea behind my work often, I think it's kind of an unconscious thing where I'm drawn towards journeys, photographing journeys. So like the road has no beginning. That was a physical walking journeys, but I also love road trips. That's something I really want to do in the future. I got my license, but I don't have a car. So <laughs> I hope in the near future on this channel, you'll be seeing a photography road trip. I mean, like it's like a rite of passage, right? Everyone has to do a road trip and take photos. Um, but generally my photography day to day is just to capture daily life and to document. That's my main thing, document a bit like that day, document your life. I think for me, it's very important when I go traveling or not even that important events, because I'm not very good at writing. I don't really keep a diary or anything like that. I always go back to photos and almost every photo I look at from the past, I can remember that moment when I was taking it, remember how I'm feeling. It's just how my brain works and I'm not very creative. I can't paint, I can't draw. So for me, it's a way of documenting. So yeah, that's it. A bit cheesy, but it's just a document basically. Right, let's have a look. So Chloe emailed me and this one is the first website critique I'm going to do. I say critique, I'm going to look through it. Um, so it's really interesting actually that Chloe watches this channel um, because she actually does pet portraits, something that I don't have a lot of experience in. But let's have a look at her website here. First of all, I think this is a really strong start. You've got a strong contrast here. So you've got the white text, the black background. Super cute dog, always helps. Um, I like the fact as well, you've picked out four, image oh, four images. Um, the only thing I would say, and we'll get to this because your portfolio, I've noticed you have pet portraits, wildlife, and then landscape and architecture. Um, it's hard, it's hard to know what you do if it's pet portraits and landscapes, because that can be quite an odd mix. So I would actually recommend, I know it's not always financially viable, but having two separate websites, you've got your pet portraits, and you've got your landscapes because sometimes I think they can get a bit messed up. So here at the front, I would probably say if this was just gonna be pet photography, just have four really strong pet photos. If not, it does show that you do, you know, a bit different, but I think having the first two pets, then a landscape, then a pet is a bit weird. I'd probably just put maybe two pets, two landscapes, to try and balance it out. So it doesn't look like your focus is just on pet portraits if you want some landscape work. By the way, I'm no expert in pet portraits, so this is just this is just my perspective. Um, but so far, really strong photography. I really love this high nice to meet you bit. It's kind of the right mix of informal but informative, and I think you feel very approachable if you just wanted to ask you a question. So I think that's really nice. See my work. 
I think that, yeah, I really like the navigation aspect. So if you just highlight pet portraits, wildlife, landscape, architecture, it all comes up. But again, this is sort of what I was saying earlier when it's got landscape slash architecture. For me, it kind of just feels like the landscape architecture is like an add-on rather than like pet portraits and landscapes. It's like pet portraits and a bit of landscape. Um, but I mean, I love your landscape and arch architecture work. I think it needs its own home. Yeah, I like, some people don't like this, but I do like the use of a quote on a website. And then at the bottom, very important on your Instagram. Um, so you can't click on this. So the only thing I would say is with the Instagram, you want to make it as easy as possible for people to reach you. And so if you click on follow me on Instagram, that takes you through to Instagram. If you click on Chloe Miller Photography, who you should all go check out, takes you through to the Instagram. But if you click on the photos from the Instagram, it highlights, which kind of indicates to the viewer that something will happen if you click on it, um, but it doesn't. So I don't know if it's possible to make the photos take you to Instagram. If not, it's not a big deal, but I would definitely make the actual Instagram logo clickable to go to Instagram as well, just to avoid, you know, just to make it as clean as possible for someone to get from your website to your Instagram. Um, but overall, your homepage is really good. See, and then, yeah, you've got another Instagram button below. I don't think you necessarily need that. Maybe just have the Facebook logo um, and your copyright's up to date. So that's all really cool. Let's have a look at portfolio. Nice. I really like the fact you've got studio locations. You've separated two. I like that a lot. Let's just have a look at your studio. <laughs> this is a cute dog. This dog is more photogenic than me. <laughs> yeah, I like this. I like... Oh, hold on a minute. So what I would do here is I like the fact... So here you've got a light white background. Then you're going down. And I like the fact... I'm going to say it's a pug. I've no idea. I'm not very good with dogs. But you've got this sort of peachy pink background. And then going down, you've got getting darker, so they're like a brown, and then, yeah, brownie black background. So I really like the gradient of this, so I think it would be great to go from your light images to your peachy pink ones down to your darker backgrounds, just to create a bit of a flow there. Um, I really love this top image, I think it's great with the word studio there, very clean, very nice. Then let's just have a look at your landscape and architecture. Oh, I really love this. This is, this is a great image. I could barely get my words out. This is really cool. And I love, you've got a great eye. I love, you've got a lot of um, symmetry going on and you've got, I love the reflection of these fireworks. The colours are brilliant. Um, I would stand by what I said earlier. I think these are really great, but I think they deserve to be completely separated. Um, I just think, yeah, I think each one is a niche in itself and they're not two niches that people normally go for together. You know, if you've got documentary and travel, quite often they can combine, but it's rare that landscapes and pet portraits combine in that way. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Let me know what you think down below, guys, what you think of this website. I think personally it's brilliant, um, especially if you're into pet portraiture. Let's just check the bookings. Yeah. I really like this. Um, it's very simple. You know what to do to fill out these forms. The only thing is I would recommend um, just, I don't think you've put it here. Let's just double check. Um, just adding a photography email address here as well, because sometimes people might want to send you images saying, can you replicate something like this? And with these forms, yeah, it doesn't look like you can't attach anything or images. So I would say, you know, contact me below using these forms or at this email address, um, just to make it as accessible as possible. But overall, brilliant website. Let's have a look at some Instagram questions. Du -du -du -du. Right, from the light, Jay, uh, how do you cope with the general lack of money as a photographer? <laughs> Good question. Um, I do get asked a lot of questions about photography and I think it's really important to talk about it. Um, some people have very high expectations, some people have very low expectations and it's definitely subjective and depends on the person. Personally, I never grew up with a lot of money. I grew up with a lot of love, but not a lot of money. 
So I learned how to manage my finances from quite an early age. And this is incredibly important when you start out in photography. Note down how much you've spent on film stock, getting it developed, developing it yourself, or if you're shooting digital, how much is your gear costing, how much to travel to a location for a shoot. Make sure you write it all down because these things really add up and sometimes if you haven't done it for a while and you put it all together, you go, wow, I've spent a lot of money and I've charged this, this is not enough. Also try and add as many strings to your bow as possible. So like I've learned through places like YouTube, Skillshare, do it for free, coding so I can code my website to a very basic um, level, but I don't need to hire anyone to do it and I can make it look quite nice. So learn basic coding for your website um, learn how to video edit. People always need video editors. Learn how to do Photoshop yourself. Learn as many skills as possible. So if you are called on and you can do something, you earn a bit of extra money doing that. Also, please be realistic. There is money in the photography game, but it's often at the very top. A lot of people who I know who are successful or happy when it comes to their photography can be different. They have part-time jobs which aren't photography related at all. And I would actually strongly recommend this, especially as when you go into the industry, you get all your creative control taken away from you and you're creating someone else's vision. So then on the side, often you want to go and do your own photography so you can get your own ideas out and it can become quite overwhelming sometimes if you're not doing the exact photography you want, which at the beginning is quite rare. So if you have a part-time job doing anything or like I do video um, editing, so it's still creative, but it's not photography. Then when I go out and do photography, I can be a bit more choosy with the clients I take on and I have more time for my personal work. So definitely be realistic. Read finance books as, <laughs> I mean, not if you're 13, but you know, from 18 onwards when you're young, read finance books so you know how it works and write everything down. I think that's everything. Right, let's go for another question. How do you achieve grain in your photos? Does it all depend on the film stock you choose? Generally, yes. So the higher the ISO you choose, the more sensitive it is to light. So if you're shooting something like 3200 film, then you're gonna get a lot more grain than something like 400 or 200. Um, yeah, it depends also on the film stock, the quality of it. Some film stocks, if you're shooting 400, will be giving you different grain, even though know they're both rated 400. But generally, the higher the ISO, the more grain. I got a Canon AE-1 a while ago to start out with and to learn with. What camera would you recommend moving on to? Now, I'm actually going to ask for your guys' help on this. Please comment down below what you would recommend for someone moving on from the Canon AE-1. I've actually never shot this camera, but I think it's probably pretty similar to a Pentax K1000, which I started out on. So, for me, I'm not a massive gearhead. I don't know loads about gear. so. Comment down below what you'd recommend someone to move on to from a Canon AE-1. Next question. From Tommy Fruit Toast. How do you choose which film to shoot on any given day? Generally for me it's dictated by the weather. It's not like I live in California. Um, so yeah, I'll pick out what sort of ISO I want depending on the weather. Um, also, if I'm shooting a load of photos, then I'll try to find a role I have with 36 exposures. Especially if I'm doing some client work, I don't want to be changing the role as often as a 24 exposure film. And then, generally, like to be honest with you, it's what I have it in. Um, so if it's for personal work or a project, I'll, I lean towards portrait. I just love the tones of it, especially for skin tones for something so i keep looking over there because that's where i keep my film <laughs> if it's not in the fridge um if it's not for that if i'm just going out with my friends it's your agvas your fuji color that sort of thing right last question i think for this episode let's find one Do -do -do. oh this is a nice one thank you <laughs> thank you jack do you sell prints Yes. <laughs> um, you might have seen in my latest video, I think it was, um, to celebrate hitting 5k subscribers on YouTube, I've picked five of my favourite prints from the last couple of years and finally set up a print shop. So I'll leave the link for that down below. I finally got around to it. People often ask me and I've done a few sales like privately, just sorted it out for people. But yeah, I've kind of taken the leap to do it. It was kind of scary, but yeah, if you want a print, go check that out down below. And yeah, I think that is it. Thank you so much for watching. 
send any more questions. Please send any more. I keep this email open all the time. So when they come to you, send them in. Comment down below any questions what you can kind of relate with or help out with. And I'll see you in the next one.